This lecture is focused on examining engineering, infrastructure, communications, technology, and related industry in using the gender framework. The progress of a country lies in the nation's level of investment in science technology and hard industry. The dependence of our country and other countries in this area is evident. Our country's mineral exports comprise a bigger portion than what is processed by locally owned corporations and construction and other related industry rely heavily on imported processed materials in building the public and private infrastructure. The heavy industries being the foundation of the aimed robust economy, unfortunately lack means to project its benefits to marginalized communities. At present, the slow growth of the economy is due to many complex issues and these include, gender. In examining this industry through the gender lens, it is aimed that learners will be able to define and apply the concepts of gender lens, gender issue, sustainable development, enumerate the factors that contribute to marginalization of women in this industry, apply the gender lens in identifying gender issues among various sectors in this industry explain gender fair vision on sustainable development. Let us review the basic concepts of gender before we proceed. Recall that in your analysis of any aspect of society, it is useful to recall the basic tenets. Sex is different from gender. Gender stereotyping, gender biases, and gender discrimination all contribute to gender inequality. These were discussed in the lecture on gender issues in the economy. You can listen to that lecture again. It is very useful. There, I touched upon gender socialization, gender division of labor etc etc. Now on the concept of women's marginalization, understand that women being relegated to the margins, meaning, they are not able to equally contribute to production on the same level with men, puts the whole society at a disadvantage because women comprise more or less half of our country's population. According to the United Nations, Marginalization of women happens when women's welfare are less prioritized by society compared to men. This type of consciousness has its roots from patriarchy, thanks, to the Western colonial legacy that seeped through our cultural mainstream. Unlike the original ancient pre-colonial society, where our women ancestors enjoyed rights in all aspects of community life, equal to those of men, women from the Spanish colonial period up to this time, are under the economic control of the men, and, this is sustained through our contemporary history as evidenced by the fact that in political decision-making of women, is minimal due to underrepresentation, the effect of stereotyping that politics is a domain of males. Now even in the current election campaign, the way society looks at and treats women candidates is sadly similar to our Spanish colonial masters. That they are treated with disrespect and their proven capabilities are dismissed merely on flimsy grounds based on their gender. To understand this, let us recall that in our past lesson it was pointed out, that there are many factors that bring about gender inequality. Some of those cited are as follows. Differences in time use between men and women as you have discovered with the application of gender analytical tool, especially the activity profiling, many of women's time is used in home management tasks. As a result, men have more time for productive activities. Gender differences in access to productive inputs. This is because of different economic status as well as different status above property rights, different levels of education, and we have explained this to be also related to the society's gender role expectations and stereotyping of roles for women. Differences in vocational skills and training due to gender stereotyping of roles. Mismatches with labor market demand because some industries one gender to another. Gendered outcomes of institutional and market failures such as in the delivery of support services to women for example child care and capital support to women. Domestic responsibilities which worsens the problem of multiple burden of women act as a barrier to the goal of equal participation in labor force. The general lack of capital especially of women in poor areas. Unequal legal status is an effect of bias laws and policies less political influence due to low level of participation. Even where the law and business procedure are gender neutral, in practice they may result in gender-based outcomes to the detriment of women. Women's enterprise have limited growth opportunities. Women take care of unpaid care work. 
So when we speak about situations of men and women, they are not the same see in this illustration. Society makes it easier for men than for women to advance in their careers. Society presents so many hurdles for women's track in the race for career advancement. What is the gender lens? This is the tool that you should hopefully acquire if you complete this course. This will enable you to have gender sensitivity and gender responsiveness. It is the perspective that make gender visible in social phenomena around you. It enables us to identify no explain act. How do we know the presence of gender issues through the gender lens? We use our critical minds examining every aspect, every stage of an event or process, and uncovering the gender dimension by asking if there is inequality in the level of participation as the effect on the lives of men and women. Engineering and industry concerns involve and affect women and thus, the whole of society. And ever-present issues of gender discrimination and gender-based violence in both private and public dimension, both affecting one way or another the stakeholders of the industries under examination. It is only through deliberate and careful consideration of the gender issues that they may be addressed. When we speak of gender and development, relate it with sustainable development. Both borrow from the United Nations framework. Here we can again apply the HRBA wherein in the past you have also learned about the participation, accountability, non-discrimination, equality and legality as basic principle. The Magna Carta of women with overarching mandates, provides that development must prioritize the empowerment of the marginalized sectors, which you have also already learned about because meaningful and continuous development may only be possible if these sectors are empowered. So when we look at the impact of development in the engineering and technology industry and relate them to gender issues among indigenous people, we must ask if there are any positive ones reaching their communities. Meaning, have their lives improved one way or another? Is access to energy and electricity brought to them? Are they given livelihood opportunities as a result of the improvement of the performance of the industry? Again when we seek for answers to these questions, we should distinguish the gender differentials. What is the effect on men-women, boys and girls among the IPs? Are the gender issues of gender-based discriminations and violence in the IP communities addressed as a result? Reproductive and general health is also an important concern for this sector. An example of gender issue is IP girls' education. Among the IPs patriarchal systems still prevail. Because of this and the reasons shown in this slide, IP girls marry and or get pregnant earlier than their counterparts in the mainstream society. Persons with disabilities are given access to transport and mobility as a result of public infrastructure development. The same effect with other improvements brought about by development. As to gender issues, you know that women PWDs are surely migrant workers are benefited by the improvement of infra, transport, and communications industry development. We need to look more closely at their experiences better their status, increase their opportunities. We need to look at their specific needs which the industry may address. How do we improve the status of women fishers? How about the senior citizens? Society is interconnected. This is why development affects all. If development is gender blind, it will not be equitable and sustainable. In this time of the pandemic, infrastructures must also cater to special sectors like the frontliners. There is a need to need to ensure their health and physical safety and welfare. Here is a short exercise using the gender lens. Let us try this. Can you recognize the gender issues in the following scene? Facts. There was a flood and many people were affected. They lacked shelter, medicine, food and other basic necessities. They were in dire need of government assistance. The clip is a scene where government distributed supplies. The news was of a pregnant IP woman farmer who fainted at the scene. Use the gender lens and examine the woman's condition and the government's action. Let us answer these questions as we analyze this case. 1. How many degrees is the IP woman marginalized over? 2. Why is the woman needing special measures from government in this particular situation? 3. List at least three suggestions to address the woman's marginalization in this situation. 
Our analysis is presented in this slide. The woman suffers from multiple marginalization. We can say she is marginalized at least four degrees. One, that she is a woman. Two, she is a farmer. Three, she is pregnant. Four, she is a member of the IP community. And lastly, she is a calamity victim. As a woman she put her family's welfare as priority. Although she is pregnant and not feeling well, she was engaged in farming and braved the danger of stampede because of her desire to secure some food supply for her children and other family members. She needs special assistance to address her underlying health conditions being a pregnant woman, safety is a special need for women as well in disaster situation. Government needs to implement an orderly system of distribution of the IUDAs, giving priority to women, senior, PWDs, and children. The food rations and other supply assistance must also be sufficient and must fulfill the immediate needs of the affected people, taking into consideration their special needs in this doubly critical time. For example sanitary napkins for their reproductive needs. Government must also consider respect for cultural norms of the recipients. Muslims cannot eat pork, etc. Why is there a need to consider gender in industries? We want to, to promote inclusive and sustainable industrial development, to advocate gender equality and participation of women, to push for long-term financial inclusion of women by closing the gaps in educational attainment and educational outcomes, to ensure women's welfare including safety, health, and overall well-being, reduce poverty especially in poor and depressed communities, fight the impacts of climate change, and promote strong institutions. As a learner of gender and society, we should always ask gender-relevant questions such as the following. 1. How many men and women are involved, affected? 2. To what extent are the women involved allowed to participate in? Decision making, how many of them compared to the number of men are occupying various levels of company hierarchy? 3. What are the gender issues in the context or situation? 4. In what ways are the women affected? 5. What interventions are taken to address the gender issues? 6. Were the women consulted when the interventions were set? 7. Are the gender issues addressed? As had been discussed, there are issues in gender pay gap as well as in the labor force participation of women and men. This will apply in this industry. As to gender differences in jobs taken up by men and women, construction industry and in managerial positions, for males, and traditionally feminine jobs such as care, low-skilled manufacturing, and lower administrative positions, for females. Women's income earning activities are also often coffin to the informal sector, including domestic work, petty trading and home-based work. The following are identified gender issues in this industry. Lack of leadership commitment to introduce policy changes to support pro-women initiatives in the industry, such as those focused on training and promotion, etc. Hierarchy of organizations dominated by men. Lack of initiative to develop future women leaders in the industry, gender bias and discrimination in the workplace lack of work-life balance to ease women's multiple burden we need to study more closely the issue of women's economic marginalization in this industry what is the extent to which women experience the following last to be hired first to be fired limited opportunities exacting sexual favors and under or non-valuation recognition of women's work the reasons of women's limitation to access to resources as follows, among others, access to resources and stable property rights as highly gendered women and girls in particular suffer from inequitable land rights and experience restricted access to resources and inheritance. Rights resources may also affect ability to access other resources or service, such as capital through loans, gender stereotypes, Women's career advancement limitations in the industry include the following. Glass ceiling is a term for the social barrier preventing women from being promoted to top jobs in management. Is gender-based violence experienced by women in the workplace in this industry? If so, what are the forms, to what extent and frequency? Are policies being reviewed and formulated to address this problem? Gender fair vision women's economic empowerment and sustainable development. 
In our appreciation of vision for women's economic empowerment. The way to equity must always promote. Equal pay for work of equal value. Economic independence. Economic opportunities. Access to resources and stable property rights. Gender fair policies and practices must be observed in the workplace, through the following practices, among others. Prohibit gender discrimination. Sanction gender-based violence. Promote women's full self-development, empowerment and dignity, and respect women's control over their body. SDG number 9 is towards building resilient infrastructure, inclusive and sustainable industrialization and innovation to promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Targets of this SDG are as follows quality reliable, sustainable and resilient infrastructure with affordable and equitable access for all inclusive and sustainable industrialization, raise industry's share of employment and gross domestic product. Access of small-scale industrial and other enterprises to financial services upgrade infrastructure with increased resource use efficiency and greater adoption of clean and environmentally sound technologies and industrial processes. Enhance scientific research. Upgrade the technological capabilities of industrial sectors. Facilitate sustainable and resilient infrastructure development. Support domestic technology development, research and innovation. Significantly increase access to information and communications technology. The United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development highlights women empowerment and equality, poverty reduction, fighting the impacts of climate change, and promoting strong institutions. In summary, the gender issues in the economy prevails in the industries. Marginalization of women in the industries is caused by normalized gender stereotypes, biases, and discrimination. Using the gender lens makes obvious marginalization of women and gender-based discrimination and violence in the industry and in the workplace. Making possible the adoption of management interventions to address them. The vision for gender equality in the industries is desired to sustain development efforts. It takes leadership reforms in policy and practice to achieve gender equality in the industries. In the end, our well-being also depends on the well-being of those around us. Gender equality may be achieved through respect of rights of others and promoting a nurturing culture towards fortifying a more humane and equitable society. This ends this lecture.